Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why doesn't thou cast me off? Why both are mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O send of the light and thy truth, let them lead me. Let them bring unto me the holy hills and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God and unto the God that my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the hearts will I praise thee. O God, my God, why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou dismissed within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the help of my confidence. Thus I read for you the entirety of the 43rd Psalm. Thank you. 
three we did, and uh, if you went to the two that's the one, made me realize I'm not in this thing by myself. And three weeks ago, I was on my way to church and came across the George Washington Bridge out in New York City. And there were about 75 cars just parked along this side of the highway. And I'm like, why are these people parked? You know, it's 7 30 in the morning. And all of a sudden, I couldn't stop. The highway was nothing but us. If you remember three weeks ago, there was 400 accidents in New Jersey and bike. And start hitting the brakes. And it's amazing how our, our training come back to us. I remember Daniel Simmons saying, if you're ever sliding, don't ever look in the direction that you're sliding. Look in the direction that you want to go. And of course, the lesson was always keep your eyes crap. And all I kept saying was, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And Catherine had been in the back going, Wee! And I was like, is that funny? When I finally stopped, I was four of a mile later. And what I saw was a, a truck with a car pretty much in the back of the truck. I pulled over, and two hours later, when we finally moved, there were over 35 cars that was in that accident. We went back home and said, hey, you guys know we're going home with this one. This past week, a friend of mine's car was stuck. I said, let me help push you out. Got in front of the car to push, and there was that voice that said, do not stand in front of the car. And I stepped to the side of the car, and I said, okay, go ahead. He had forgot to put the car in reverse. And when he hit on that gas, he hit the car in front of him so hard that it moved about an inch. And I was on my way to push from in front. You're not in this thing alone. You know, God is watching every single thing that happens to us. And if you're going through something right now and you're questioning where is God, He's right there. He's watching. He's caring. He's carrying you. No matter how bad it gets. And, and I'm getting to the age now, you know, not as old as this gentleman here, but I'm getting close to him. And he's like Deacon Thomas and, and, and Deacon Johnson and Deacon Gray, and they always say, Son, this one will work. You will see. And I'm getting there when I'm seeing that God is already at work. Yes. He's sustaining us, He's keeping us, He's maintaining us. So keep on holding on. Keep your faith. And He will carry you through. No matter how bad it gets, no matter where you find yourself, 17 years old, and you just feel like, oh man, I already messed up. And I'll do like they say, keep on living. And you will get through. Thank you. I'll have some good days. I'll have some hills to climb. I'll have some more days and some sleepless nights. But when I when I look around and I'll think things over all of my good days. Away my family. I I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see see the road. Oh, what's best? 
available to not continuously act in the prayers of passion and anxiety. The church clerk would like to publicly thank Trustee Jesus Gibbons for graciously stepping in and reading one announcement at the 7 30 a.m. church anniversary service on last Sunday. All men are asked to remain for a brief minute stay in here for after the service today in the main sanctuary. Thank you, Trustee Lyndon Brown. Saturday, February 14th, mission. At 10 o'clock a.m., Kumbaya Mission Meeting. Sunday, February 15th, Appreciation Day in Go Red. At 3.30 p.m., Appreciation Service honoring Deacon Hollis Ford. The layman ministry will be in charge. The guest will be Emmanuel Institutional Baptist Church, 1730 North 22nd Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Reverend, Dr. Reverend Joseph Daniel Pastor. Women of Purpose join the movement and heart disease in serving both women and men. Celebrate Go Red Sunday, a time set aside to rethink and promote health awareness. Please wear your Victoria bread. Sunday, February 22nd, African American Heritage Day. Annual African American Heritage Day, the Majestic Choir will be in charge. Also, the ABC Sunday School will be celebrated back to the room. Please join them as they celebrate the past by honoring their ancestors. Immediately following these announcements and before the welcome, Deacon Gerald Brown and Deacon John T. Johnson will come briefly in that order. We thank you for, your, for our financial support from last Sunday. This concludes the announcement. Good morning again. Our emissary on this Sunday, I'm asking all ladies to please stay after the 10 30 service. So for a short brief meeting, and then the next Sunday we need to see all y'all here at 3 30 to help us celebrate and to serve. Thank you. Give the praise to the Almighty God who is worthy of our praises. I would just like to take a few moments to emphasize next Sunday activities at the 3.30 service. In your program for the last couple of Sundays, it stated that it was Lot Carey's day. For those who are not familiar with Lot Carey, Lot Carey is a foreign mission committee dealing with foreign missions. But our pastor suggested that let's take next, next Sunday and do some home mission in a way of honoring one of our own who has done so much through this at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. Now, we have not put Lot Carol aside. We will still be doing what we need to do in honoring our responsibility to Lot Carol. As a matter of fact, in August, my wife and I will be going to Lot Carol Convention located in Greensburg, North Carolina. We will be representing Abyssinian Baptist Church, but to represent home mission. Please, let us come out and support our own Deacon Hollis Ford on next Sunday. There is a fly in your program, and we ask that you just look over the program, take it to heart, and respond accordingly by giving what you can to celebrate Deacon Hollis Ford Service Award Day. Thank you so much. And by the way, the usher should have envelopes, the usher will have envelopes. And if you have not received one, we're going to ask that you see the ushers are, they will give you one. Thank you so much.
Y'all don't know who about America, that's Sumter County. 39 miles north of Albany, Georgia. 72 miles south of Macon and 150 miles south of Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. And uh, it's a place where, where, where the Flint River runs through. When they flooded, Deacon Ford had death in his family. And I flew down to Georgia to go and be with him and could not leave Ellaville because the river had flooded. That one man wanted to take me over in a helicopter. I told him, I'm sorry. If I have a boat, I'll get on it, but not get in a helicopter. But uh, we're, we're going to honor Deacon Ford, amen, for all of the great work he has done. The Lord, the Lord has blessed him 93 years young and still going, amen. And, uh, and, and so next Sunday, come prepare to stay all day because the layman, if they're going to not only fix food for Emmanuel, they're fixing food for all of us who are going to stay for the 3.30 service, amen? amen? So you don't have to run home, you can come and, and be here. There's some envelopes that us have been passing out. Put your special little offer in there just for Deacon Ford. If you're going to write a check for a thousand dollars, make it out to Hollis Ford, amen? amen. And, uh, and I know he would appreciate it, and, uh, and, and we're looking forward to it. Now, I, we would love to have the money but it would be even better if you showed up with your money. Amen. 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 We want you in the building as we come to honor uh, this young man. Asking your prayer, huh? Who's that? And if you want to turn your envelopes in, that in your program there's a, 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 a little advertisement sheet and it gives the name of the committee members. You can turn it in to any committee member. Amen. And they will be glad to take it for you. Um, Sister, Sister Harris, come on up here. She, she, she has a testimony she wants to share. Yeah. And, and worship is the place to give your testimony. Amen. And we are in worship. Amen? Amen. And uh, so, how many minutes you need? Two? Okay. All right, we got a minute and 59 seconds. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Ah, as a mother, we know we get down on knees and we pray for our children, right? And each and every time I pray, I pray for all my friends and family. No hurt, harm, or danger. My son was on his way to work on Friday, and he was at a light, and someone rear-ended him in the back of his car. His entire car was pushed all the way up to the front seat. And thank God, he only got away with a bruised arm fracture. So your prayers do matter. So God be the glory for what he did for me to save my child. Thank you. Amen. Mary, I need the two more minutes if you shout. Amen. That's, that's something to shout about. Amen. Amen. So God be the glory. Amen. For the great things he has done. Amen. want to thank God for Deacon Gray. Amen. Amen. Being here with us today. Every chance he gets and can come, amen, he's here with us and we thank God for him. Now, let me make this one announcement. I'm going to have a sheet over in the clerk's office uh, on, on that usual, in that usual place where you sign. And uh, we've been asked to come to Columbia, South Carolina. Fellowship with Reverend Baker on his anniversary in April. It's the Sunday before Men's Day. That's the Sunday before the Men's Day Sunday. And I need to know whether to tell him I'm coming by myself or you're coming with me. He's been able to secure rooms, two in a room. You can stay for $40 a night each. And, uh, and since it's transportation, uh, the church will pay for the bus. Amen. Matter of fact, the money already in the budget uh, for the bus. All we have to worry about is your hotel. And you're going to eat and barbecue at his house, swimming pool party, the whole thing. Some of y'all who always want to wear your two feet bathing suit. <laughs> you can do it that weekend, amen? All I need to do is just sign on the list and let me know, you know, 
well, I have enough. And, and really, I, I need enough to make up a choir here, too. Amen? So y'all sign, and if you're in the choir and want to sing, you know, just put on their choir, okay? And that way I can kind of keep up with who, who who's going. Amen? God bless you. God keep you. Say it again. They're still there. All right. Uh, for those persons who still got some questions about, you know, the uh, health care plan, the ladies of, from uh, the Department of Health and Human Services are still downstairs. They can answer your question. They can sign you up. The deadline is approaching. Amen. And in today's time, there's no need for anybody to be without health care. Amen. With all that Obama took to get that thing passed, we ought to be running. Amen. And, and, and I, I saw stuff up on Facebook that troubled me. And so I just want to want to make a statement about it. Somebody put up there that for Black History Month, all black women ought to take their weeds out of their hair and go natural. Let me let me say this so that ignorant folk won't make those kind of ignorant statements. All people of color don't have natural hair. <laughs> you y'all know that? You got some Brazilians who are colored. You got some Indians from India who are colored. Amen. And some got straight hair, some got kinky hair, some got curly hair, some ain't got no hair. But quit putting that ignorant stuff up there. All Colored people don't have nappy hair. Amen. 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 And some of them have put nothing in it. It's just that way. Huh? Amen, Amen somebody. Y'all make sure y'all speak to them. Let the church say amen.
And when we go, Lord, and enable us to say what you would have us to say, and do what you would have us to do. And then, my Father, I thank you for who you are. And I ask now, my Father, as we look to the future, and as we enjoy the future, what you have in store for us, please, my Father, help us to understand the past from which you have brought us from. For you brought us from a mighty long way through trials and tribulations. And now, my Father, I petition on behalf of the sick, the homeless, the helpless, the downtrodden, the brokenhearted, the poor, the least, the spiritual, physical, and the mentally disturbed, O oh Lord. Whatever the situation is, at one time or another, we have been there. But we look to you, my Father, you will strengthen us with your love as we come forth to be like you would have us to be. And then, my Father, we want to thank you for your son, Jesus, who came, who lived and died, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And then, my Father, we ask you to just continue to fight our life. And sometimes the wicked become down and he's trembling, that it will blossom again and illuminate the sin, sick, dark world. And then, my Father, you told us there will be wars and multiple wars. We will be faced with earthquakes, man and planet. So many things, my Father. And we turn around looking for an answer instead of looking to the answer because you are the answer. And then, my Father, you told us in your word that we, who are your people, and are called by in your name, would humble ourselves and pray and seek in your face and turn from our way to way. You say if you would give from heaven, you would forgive us of our sins and heal the sin sick land. And we thank you, my Father, for what you're going to do because you have never betrayed your word. You've always been who you are. You've always been there for us. And sometimes our Father, the enemy, the answer is just continually knocked on our door. But when he knocked, just tell us. You've been born with a price. He has no way that he can enter in. And then my father, the time will come. But we will no longer leave our footprints on the same time. We're going to that world called death, never to come out of war. But when that time comes, my father, let us go not like the stories made the night stories to his dungeon, but sustain the soul with an unfortunate trust. Let us approach the grave like the one who rides the bread from the scouts about him and lie down to put the dreams. Now that one day you wake up in the land of God and pray that the thing will cease from trouble, and the weary soul will be at rest. And a man, my father, where every day will be sunny, and heaven will have no end. And a man, my father, is clothed with every man. But most of all, my father, in a land where we will meet your son Jesus face to face, and he will present us father before you. And he will say, Well done, well done, that good and faithful servant. Rest from that loving law. The battle is fought, the victory is won, and turn that last is yours. Save us all without the lost one at the seventh prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. It's another day's journey, and I'm so glad about it. It's another day's journey, and I'm so glad about it. So glad about it.
Call on him. 
then during the uh, 1045 service, I've been trying to deal with Black History Month. So today I want to stay in that. I want to deal with uh, kind of, you know, African American History Month doing this, this service. I want to call your attention to 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. I, I could read uh, verses 10 and 11, but you, you would ask me, brother, what's going on? Because so much is left out. <clears throat> so I want to read 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 11. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say wait a while. Okay, I hear some wait a while. We'll, we'll wait on it. Second Kings. Amen. Amen. Chapter 20, verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, Remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, and both before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day. Thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil. And he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, The sign shall thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing, do the thing that thou hast spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down three degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backwards ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backwards, by which it was gone down in, in the dial of Ahaz. That's the word of the Lord. I want to preach today from the subject Turning back the hands of time. Turning back the hands of time. Many people have a nostalgic vision of the past. And many of them remember something they had at a more pleasant time. If all of us look back in our lives, we will find out that over the course of time, some of us have won or lost whole fortunes. Yes, sir. Some of us have lost loved ones or lost beautiful relationships. Yes, and along the way, many of us have lost dear loved ones and friends. Mm -hmm. Those who have made mistakes often dream about getting a chance to do it all over again. Those who are unhappy now often ponder what it would have been like or what it would be like to return to that happy day and relive life again. This nostalgic wishes is perhaps what Tyrone Davis had in mind, uh, Brother Shingles, when he wrote this song many years ago, If I Could Turn Back the Hands of Time. I see more than Deacon Shingles remember that song, but as we celebrate Black History Month, 
there are many who hear the reflections of our elders about the good old days. And, and we are fascinated with life as it was lived in the past. Yeah, those were the days of family prayer. And, and, and I'm quite sure that, that, that every person my age and older can remember those family prayers. Yeah, we remember the day when we heard mama pray, heard grandmama pray, heard granddaddy pray, and they would pray for the family. We remember those days, they were days of community sharing. And I remember when if we had, everybody in our neighborhood had. Mama wouldn't dare go to the garden and pull a mess of greens and not share them with Martha up the street. And then I remember one Sunday morning, we were getting ready to go to Sunday school, and, and one of Martha's children came to the house and said, Miss Pinky, Mama said, can you loan her some grits and eggs and bacon and light bread? And, and Mama said, why don't you tell Martha, y'all just come on down here and we can all eat breakfast together. And that, that was nothing unusual about borrowing from a neighbor. Why? Because we had all things common. And when one of us had, all of us had. Can you get a witness? Yeah, those were the days of mutual respect. The, the, those were the days, brothers and sisters, when a man's word was his bond. Yeah, they didn't sign no paper. Papa just shook hands with the neighbor, and that handshake meant that what I said is what it's going to be. Can you get a witness? But today, signing our name don't mean much to many of us. Yeah, but we got to understand, brothers and sisters, that those were the days when there were no welfare and social security, but every family that made their living by the sweat of their pride. I, I just don't understand what it is about us now. Many of us don't want to work nowhere. Say amen if you will. But, but in those days, everybody, you know, found something that they could do. Yeah, we had a man in the neighborhood who sold peanuts. He walked up and down the street selling peanuts. Had another man, all he did was shine shoes. Had another man that fixed cars. Everybody had something that they could do. Those were the days when every family that took care of the children and the aging members of their family. I'm telling you, I don't remember when I was growing up that, that, that black folks sent their old folk to old folk home. Say amen, somebody. If, if Mary died and she had any but children, then somebody in the family would take those children and raise them. When grandmama got too sick to live by herself, she moved in with her children or her grandchildren. We knew how to look after and take care of one another. But those were the days when mothers provided their own daycare. And, and fathers did leave recklessly, you know, without any care. Yeah, those were the days of, of, of that old time close stumping, hand or head shaking, soul stirring religion that made us move, shout, and cry. And as we look back, we should reclaim the good things from the past. But when we look back, we should not peer with tunnel vision and only see misty waters, colored pictures, and the way things were. Say amen, somebody. Because when you look back and look back at it, you know, realistically, that there are some things you just don't want to go back to. Can you witness? And as born again believers, our desire is not to turn back the hands of time because we constantly look forward to the coming of a better day, happier times, and a joyous reunion with our Lord. We look back, but we don't want to go back because we are on our way to Canaan's land. Now, the words of our text considers the prayer of King Hezekiah. And I think, I think I need to let you know, first of all, that Hezekiah was a black king over Judah. And Hezekiah was the son of Ahaz and, and, and the eighth generation grandson of the evil queen Jezebel, the black wife of King Ahab. Said so it was blackness back then. Jezebel herself was queen of Zion or Zidon before she married King Ahab of Israel. Her people were descended of Canaan, who was one of the four sons of Ham, Noah's black son. The text therefore considers a black man's prayer to God. 
Hezekiah is most famous for his prayer to God after he had been told that he was going to die. You remember, the prophet went to him and told him, Hezekiah, get your house in order because you're going to die and not live. The aged king turned his face toward the wall and asked God for an extension on his life. God answered the prayer and sent the prophet Isaiah to announce to him that he would add 15 years to his life. And as a sign that his prayer had been answered, God told Isaiah to tell him that he would be given a sign of confirmation. The king was given the option. He said, now you can either go forward in time or you can what? Go backwards in time. In other words, you can go forward by having the sundial move forward 10 degrees or going backwards by having the sundial move back 10 degrees. And Hezekiah chose to turn back the hands of time as a sure sign that the Lord had answered his prayer. Because he said, if you just leave the sundial alone, guess what? It'll go forward 10 degrees by itself. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to be sure that the Lord has answered my prayer, so I want him to set it back 10 degrees. If the black community could turn back the hands of time, what would we reclaim and what would we bring back from our past? If, if, we, if it were possible, most of us would readily agree that we should go back and reclaim two of our most prized institutions. And those are the two I really want to deal with today. The first institution we need to reclaim is the black family. The, the black family, once raised for its strength, or praised for its strength and resilience, is rapidly crumbling as a source of strength in our community. That's really what made us strong, the black family. The elements that made families strong are being provided or rather eroded by what we call secular appeals. The strong mother of time past is fast becoming an antique. Today she's a career woman and, and part-time mother who often delegates up her, 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 her parental responsibility to daycare center while she works in the marketplace. And I'm not being hard on them. Some of them have, have to do that. The strong commanded father of time past who, who defended his family and kept bread on the table is becoming a thing of the past. Increasingly, black families are operating without fathers. Yes. And, and you know what really makes it bad? After uh, uh, fatherless homes are becoming an acceptable trend yes, to a new generation of families that they have begun to, to assume that the family can survive without a father. Yes. And, and you got some women to tell you, man, I don't need no man. I raise my children. By myself. And some of them go so far as they don't even want to get married. They even want to go to a sperm bank and, you know, just be parents. And I heard it on television the other night where this lady was bragging that she and her female companion both had a child. They both were artificially inseminated. She gave natural birth, the other one had a C section. So what the son supposed to do when he goes to school? I got two moms. Y'all better talk to me. <laughs> and, and, and so fathers have, you know, and, and, and now they, 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 they can just, you know. But as a community, we are losing black families. If ever there was a, a need to turn back the hands of time and reclaim the fervor for families of the past generation, that time is right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know we have more African American men in prison than we do in college? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And let me tell you, church, the church can help kindle the flame of working to help struggling families with counseling, economic, and social assistance. 
we got to do that. We, 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 we got to spend less time up in here shouting and spend more time counseling our families. Talk to them about economics. Teach them how to save money and invest money. Stan the week told me there wasn't but one pot of money in the world. And if you lose a dollar, somebody else gains a dollar. Out of that same pot of money. And it's time out now that y'all stop talking about that pie in the sky. And, and, and you need to be trying to get a part of that pie while you're on earth. God didn't mean that because you were saved, you got to be poor. But we want, we want our kids to walk around with $200 sneakers. And then we didn't have a job. The church got to promote programs that bring families together. Right, right in the church this morning. If I ask every husband to get up and go sit next to his wife, almost half the men in here would have to move because they're sitting somewhere other than next to their wife. If I ask the children, go sit next to your parents, almost all the children would have to move. We have programs that, that, that talk about everything except family. All of be teaching parents and skills to newlyweds. How do you expect Susan to be a good mother when she's never been a mother before? And y'all around right here bragging, oh, I've been married 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, I raised 10 children. But teach some of these young families. We ought to be instructed and supporting couples who are in crisis. And let me tell you, that some of these young marriages, they are, they are in crisis. And they need some senior saints, some seasoned saints, some mature saints to come and work with them. And then you need to instill the value of prayer and family worship. Now, don't, don't come to church and leave your spouse at home. Don't come to church and leave your children at home. We need to come together for family worship. And then we need to instill in them some ways that churches can help reclaim lost families. These old pews, you know, before we fixed them up and did a whole lot of stuff to them, there was a number on every pew. And that pew number belonged to a family. And that's the way Jews kept up with the number of families. See, we, we, we keep membership by person. I got 100 members. Jews will tell you we got 50 families. Because that's what they work toward. They work toward families. Reaching back into our past to reclaim our lost families is certainly a need today. But then the second institution that has slipped out of our fingers is our school. And as a great grandson and granddaughter of slaves and sharecroppers, we know the importance that school has played in our history. Let me tell you, I remember when I schooled very nine. We went to school in churches, in black churches, yes, sir. Yes, sir. until they rebuilt the school. And guess what? When we, when we had our schools, we paid for their operations out of the meager earnings of sharecroppers. There was a time when the state didn't pay teachers. You had a school, a community, had to pay that teacher who taught in that one-room schoolhouse. We built shabby buildings. And we begged and borrowed to keep them going. I, I, I was on the internet last night, and it popped up that the new president of Knoxville College in Tennessee was fired after three months on the job. 
But now you think that's funny. Think about this. He was working for nothing. He was still teaching at Vanderbilt in Tennessee and driving and serving as president of Knoxville who had a hundred students, no accreditation, and he was working for nothing. And they fired him. I remember hearing the story of how we kept our black colleges open. Sharecroppers. Grandsons of slaves. And now we got black folk with masters and doctorate degrees making all kind of money and black colleges are closing. All around us. Today there is more value in going forward than there is in going backwards. And Hezekiah had the option of going forward or turning back the hands of time. And brothers and sisters, there are some things that are better left in the past. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back to buying my hamburger at the back door and pay in front door prices. I don't want to go back to paying bus staff at the front of the bus, but having to take a seat on the back of the bus. I don't want to go back to drinking water from colored only water fountains. I don't want to go back to bowing and scratching my head from my yasa master. I don't want to go back to lynch bodies hanging from trees. No, I don't want to go back. I'd rather turn my eyes to the future. Can I get a witness? Yeah, I'd rather turn my eyes to to the future. But if you remember since since 1954 and the rise of, of integration, which we prayed for, we lost control of our school. I, I remember in my school alone, we had 73 black teachers, three vice principals and a principal. That's in my school. But now in all of Grady County, in the whole county, there are 30 black teachers. And my question is, what, what happened? We lost. When we controlled our school, our children were taught to fear God. And teachers were allowed to put the fear of God in them. I'm talking about when we controlled our own school. Huh? That they could be used to motivate our children and inspire them to build rather than tear down. But our schools have slipped away from us. The buildings are in our community, but we don't have no control over what goes on in those buildings. Can I get a witness? As a community, we are losing the educational battle. If we could turn back the hands of time with respect to education, it would be to recapture the dedication of those old time teachers. Who understood that whenever they walked into that classroom, their dress, their behavior was a part of that unplanned curriculum. Because little girls wanted to dress like their teacher. Little boys wanted to dress like their male teacher. And as a community, we will lose it. The educational doubt. The church can help by encouraging, motivating young people to enter the field of education and help finance their training. You notice that last part? Help finance their training. Thank God for Claire, we're great. Scholarship is helping 
to train our young people. Thank God for Cinnamon Scholarship that helping to train our young people. The church can, can help by, by promoting scholarship and academic excellence with awards and prizes. When these kids come up in here with A's, you know, we ought to make we ought to make something to do about it. Yes, Say amen, somebody. Yes. And if you got a kid who got a D last time and he got a C this time, we ought to make something to do about that. Yes, Let them know that progress really matters. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. The church can help by tutoring those. Who are having problems? Had a young man, and I don't mind telling you who he is. It's um, Sister Fracton's husband. They are doing some stuff, helping young boys and young men and young ladies, tutoring and math and other stuff. And he's doing it somewhere else. I said, man, bring that program to Abyssinia. We'll give you free space. All I want you to do is just come. So that children in church and children in the community can come in and get help with their math and their science. Don't you remember the time when the first place you learned to read was in church? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But even on a broader scale, churches can venture and to the establishment of private, church-sponsored academics where educating our young is within our control. You want to know what Southern Caucasians did after the law was passed to, to desegregate schools? Churches created private schools. Yes, and so they could educate their children their way and didn't have to worry about sitting next, you know, to, to uh, Latifa and, you know. Hmm? We, 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 we got to venture. We, we're losing the battle for educational excellence, and we desperately need to reclaim any semblance of what we once had in education. I remember, and I'm going to move on to the third point, I remember in my, in my class, there were 87 of us. Two died before graduation. The other 85 graduated. Yes, None of them were in special aid. Amen. Right. None of them on medication. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and they all graduated. Yeah. I remember when 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 Miss Miss Cora Davis was given a final examination, she called William Richardson and I, one of my classmates, together and said, "Look at here, y'all go home and y'all study with Irvin G, because he gonna pass this test, so he won't have to stay back next year." Right. Talking about teachers yeah. who care about children. Yeah. I remember when. When, when, when it was time to go to the prom, this was my senior prom. And, and my mama had 11 children, and I didn't have no tuxedo, couldn't afford to rent a tuxedo. And my, my, my business teacher, Mr. Emmanuel, had a tuxedo. I was 6'5", he was 5'11". <laughs> oh, no. But see, everybody know anything about clothes. Older men, clothes fit differently on younger men than they did on older men. He loaned me his tuxedo. Sleeves came up to here. And all I had to do was drop the waist a little bit and the pants was at least touching the top of my shoe. Because I'm not tall from the waist down. I'm tall from the waist up. Believe it or not, my leg length is only 35. But I'm 6'6". Six, six. So I was able to wear that because a teacher cared enough. Y'all mind if I, I just talk about that? I'm sorry. And, and, and this, this man has, has since died 
and gone to heaven. And you know what I did in order to repay him? Emma and I adopted his grandson, his great-grandson, as our child, as our godson. And occasionally, and when I was home for he came over, spent a day with me. I'm talking about educators, y'all. But as we probe this subject, I, I think I ought to tell you that some things are best left in the past. Huh? Remember I told you, Hezekiah had an option to go forward or backwards, and he chose to go back. There's some things that are better left in the past. Hmm? I'd rather turn my eyes to, to the future and know that one of these days, all this that we've been going through is going to be over. I, I, I march with our mayor and the police chief, the police captain, the police director, the, the, the fire director, the, the, the policemen, the, the, the inspectors. We, we walk in every street in the city. And yet it doesn't seem like things are getting any better. Sure, crime is down. But as long as one black child is being killed on our streets, we still have a problem. Can we get a witness? And as long as one black business, you know, get robbed, or, or one business in the neighborhood get robbed, we still have a problem. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather look forward to the day when weeping will cease and joy will come in the morning. I look forward to the day when I can walk down the streets and, and not be afraid. My wife told me last night, she said, I've been living over here 15 years and this is the first time. Or she said, I'll never walk from my house down the heart phone. And I said to her, baby, you blessed that you didn't have to because I don't feel safe. Amen. Walking from my house down the heart phone. Yeah. Uh, but, but let me tell you, there's going to come a time. But we won't have to worry about that. I'd rather look toward the day when every valley shall be exalted. Yes, and every mountain shall be made low. I, I'd rather look toward the day when justice run down like water yeah. and righteousness like a mighty stream. Yeah. When I look back, I see the good days. Yeah. But I also see some troubling days. Yeah. Can you witness? Yeah. I, I remember Jim Crow laws. Yeah, I, I remember when I, you, you, you couldn't walk on the same side of the sidewalk as a Caucasian woman. Yeah. I remember when you had to turn your head the other way yeah. rather than uh, look in the face of a white woman. Yeah. Can you get a witness? Yeah. But when I look to the future, yeah. I'll be able to say I'm so glad yeah. that trouble don't last always. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? And one of the meanest things that I had to experience as a boy yeah. was July the 12th, 1963, yeah. when my older brother and one of my best friends drowned in a private fish pond. Yeah. And, and, and a few weeks later, I, I was riding in the truck with the man that we were working for when my brother drowned. And there were several white men at, at, at the station, and, and they said to the white guy that I was riding with, it's time to go kill some more coons. I, I didn't know what they were talking about. I thought they were talking about going hunting, but, but Floyd was a good friend of mine. He was one of the few good white persons I knew. He said to me, Perry, they were talking about the drowning of your brother. And, and that hurt me to the heart that somebody could be so heartless. And, but then when, when I thought about Selma and, and what they did on the Pedestry Bridge, uh, when I think about Birmingham and, and what they did, when I think about Albany, Georgia, and, and what they did, when I think about what went on in Ohio, it, it lets me know, brothers and sisters, that, that one of these days, Trouble will be all over. Can we get a witness here? But I heard that the hymnologist says, I'm decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though I may wonder, I still will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross is before me. No turning back. Thank <laughs> you.